evening. Good evening. Well, we want to bid you a good, warm welcome. <laughs> this is it. <laughs> oh, but it's good that we're just so happy for each of you. Brave the weather. Usually when we have our service here, in Glory Land, we usually have a blizzard. Well, bring it on. Someone suggested this morning to, to keep, you know, uh, the tradition going. We should go to the Dairy Queen and get everybody a blizzard. <laughs> Then we'd have a full church for sure. <laughs> well, we're just so happy to have each of you here tonight, and uh, and we're going to uh, we're going to bless your heart tonight with the music that God has put on our hearts. But let's open with prayer. Father, we thank you tonight that we can come together to praise you through music and through sh sharing the testimonies. Lord, as we join together tonight, may the name of Jesus be glorified. For it's in His name we pray. Amen. 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 You know, wouldn't it be a this wouldn't this be a beautiful day for Jesus to come back? Anybody complain about it? Oh my! You know, even you y'all came here to hear a guitar, but wouldn't you rather hear a trumpet? <laughs> Oh, bless the Lord.
Valley knew the service was coming up, and uh, boy, about two weeks ago tonight, I got a call that was just a bandy, didn't have any voice. Last night was the first time I could actually try singing for the last two weeks, and I was trying to give my cold back to the devil, and secretary came to the church this morning and said, I got your cold. <laughs> I didn't tell her I was trying to give it to the devil. <laughs> that was a really bad joke. <laughs> Well, we're, we're looking for a day when all of these uh, troubles and cares are, are going to be your uh, left behind. What's it? Your microphone is really crackling. That's what I was wondering. Your guitar is fuzzy. Too. My guitar is fuzzy. Oh, it's starting to be crackling and fuzzy. I'm fuzzy. <laughs> it's all gone. <laughs> I hate that when somebody says, say something. <laughs> I never have any words to say. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs>
And you can be sure that the Lord is going to respond some way that it is my pleasure to give you the kingdom. My good pleasure. To welcome you home. You know, a lot of us have been talking about with great excitement about Jesus coming back and going home to glory for all the ages of eternity. But I wonder how excited Jesus is to present the bride to his father. Well, we can look in the mirror and kind of question some of that, but that's where we use faith in the Word, that we know that it's true, that Jesus loves us with an undying love and closer than a brother. Wow, that's really something, isn't it, to be that special? Just thinking back the other day about, well, we've had a couple of nights we've been able to look out into the sky and see the stars. Last night was quite a light show there to the north. Lots of lightning uh, north of us and to the east. And uh, went out and sat on the deck about 10.30 and was on the phone for about another hour. I didn't get bit once by a mosquito. I don't know where they went. They've been there all summer. They didn't watch your cold either. <laughs> <laughs> they took that earlier. But anyhow, just looking at the, the stars, the constellations. And, you know, when you think about the, the vastness of space, which we can't begin to wrap our minds around. Even, you know, the, the diameter of the Earth, was it 800 miles, 1,000 miles, can't remember. But the Sun was 180,000 miles through its diameter. Wow! It's just amazing. And then you start bringing in the stars and, and all of this that's been created for us to show us the greatness of the size of our Heavenly Father. It's there to bless us. And as we gaze upon them, it should make our problems seem pretty small and insignificant, knowing that man, the one who created all this is totally, totally in charge. We can get a little bent out of shape, maybe a lot, about what goes on in our government today. And, uh, but doesn't Scripture tell us that all the nations are but dust in His hand? He holds the whole earth in the span of His hand. Wow, what an awesome God. Well, I want my life to glorify Him. And uh, I want to spend it touching people for Him. Because that's really the joy in living. Helping to further the kingdom of God in however we do it. And it can be such a small thing as a high and a smile. Just reaching out. Yeah, it means a lot. I pray that I will burn out for Jesus. I pray that I will burn out for His love.
uh, gave me that sign and uh, my dad sold you Minneapolis Moline doing a field over by the highway gully. <laughs> It gets kind of boring working in that sand going up and down and whatever. But boy, just thinking about the Lord. And, and, uh, I was four year old and in the Lord and, and uh, wow, wanting to make a difference for the kingdom. So. You know, our voices change over the years. And thinking and looking at the key of that thing. All right. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. We'll see how how far gone this goal really is. You can yell it tonight. I'm following Jesus. What's that? Sorry that Brenda's not here tonight. She's having hip problems and she just can't walk up up the stairs, right? Up to the steps. So anyway, she's not here and kind of changes the music that we do. But uh, you know, it was it was back in 1969, 44 years ago, on August the third that we got in our old 64 Chevrolet, our honeymoon car. We, uh, we've been, Lois and I have been married exactly one year to the day. We got in the old Chevrolet and took off for our first service as the Glory Light Gospel team. And we went down to Elbert Lee, Minnesota, scared out of our wits. We had no idea what to expect. Here we are, you know, to just uh, barely out of school and barely married. <laughs> I think so, <somewhere. laughs> uh, Anyway, just married. 
David and Brenda were well, they married for a couple of weeks, three weeks. So we gave them a chaperone honeymoon. And they appreciated that so much. But we were so kind, we even let them sit in the back seat. And, uh, well, we, we didn't have a lot of equipment in those days. You know, we had a couple of guitars and, uh, and an amplifier. And so our, the trunk was full of our equipment. And then we each had a suitcase or two that sat inside. So we had to sit close together. No problem back there. <laughs> But anyway, we took off for Albert Lee and got down there for our first service. Had no idea what God was going to do. You know and that we'd be still going 44 years later. And that was in March of 1973. That it was suggested to us that we go on radio. And I'll tell you again, that terrified us, but yet it excited us. And so, we, uh, we end up going on Boston Radio Station, and then over on the Crookston Radio Station, and now that's been 40 years. And now we're also on, on uh, Thay Fair. And, uh, but besides that, you know, back in the early days when we first started, we started out with a real to real machine. And, uh, and it was kind of complicated, you know, every time you shut the machine down, if you made a mistake and had to stop and start over again or start on song over again, you got a click in it. So everybody could tell how many mistakes you made. We did a lot of praying. But anyway, this thing went on, you know, and we were, uh, went on radio and today, uh, it's a whole lot different because now we sit. I sit in my office with my uh, our recorder, and it's now it's a computer actually. And uh, when I get done, then Jeremy comes over and puts it, runs it down into his laptop, and then from the laptop he emails it to the radio stations. And so we don't even have to go to the post office. It's just emailed in, and then it's there immediately. And they program it into their computer at the radio stations. And so they know when it's going to come on. Everything is so automated. And then after it's sent off to the radio station, then Jerry downloads it into our website. And it can be picked up. Our radio broadcast can be picked up in any part of the world. Who would ever think 40 years ago that we did the first Notes of Glory broadcast that that broadcast was going to go worldwide and touch people throughout the world. That's only God. It's God. You know, over these years, we've had a, a lot of just wonderful, wonderful experiences. You are looking at some very, very rich people. Although, you kind of like Nathan said when he was little, he said, Dad, we're rich, aren't we? And I said, yeah, we are. And then he said, but we don't have much money, do we? I said, no, we don't. But we are rich because we are rich in friends. We are rich in experiences that God has given to us. And by the way, it's good to see Paul and Shirley Ramsey here. And when we were pastoring down in uh, Watertown, South Dakota, they were in our church down there. In fact, before then, Paul and I were roommates at the California Lutheran Bible School. And uh, after that, he still wanted me to be, to be his pastor. Isn't that just an amazing thing? But anyway, this is a very, very special, very special night for us. And we're just so happy that you could come here and share it with us. But uh, anyway, one, on one of those trips, we went down to San Antonio, Texas. And uh, we were staying with a couple down there. and. Uh, while we were there, they said, have you ever heard the Bill Gaither Trio? We said, no, we just heard them on radio. And they said, well, they're going to be having a concert here tonight in San Antonio. Would you like to go? And so we said, we sure would. And so we went into this huge auditorium, and the, the Gaithers, that was back when, when Danny was still traveling with them, and uh, they were in there. 
prime of time, you know, as far as the trio was concerned. <coughs> Before the Gaither started singing, they had another couple that uh, sang first, and that was uh, Henry and Hazel Slaughter. And uh, they got up and they sang a song that just blessed our hearts. And uh, we've loved to sing it ever since, and we're going to do it for you uh, tonight. For years, that's what we're on the road. You know, get ready for a program, and David would be getting, figuring out what we're going to sing. Jeremy would come, come to David and he says, Could you have Mom and Dad sing, I Keep Falling in Love with You? When I first fell in love with Jesus, and I gave him started singing with us. He wasn't very big. Well, actually, when he first started singing with us, we stuffed the pacifier in his mouth. <laughs> that took care of it for a while, but... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, each of the kids, you know, we've had on the, they, you know, they grew up on the road, and each one of them could have a story to tell. When Kevin would get up, he'd always have all the little girls make an eyes at him. He didn't have a beard then. This is not a beard. Goat I'd like to go back to that old country church to hear the songs of praise. How the people would sing, it would make raptors ring at that old country church. Shall we gather at the river, the beautiful, the beautiful river? Yeah. 
you. You know, over the years, you know, when we first started out, back before we started out, uh, you know, as you're making plans for it, you think about what can we sing? And uh, David started writing music. And you know, uh, I don't know how many, how many he wrote, you know, that first year before we ever got started, but uh, I just wrote a couple, so he must have written about 10 or 12, something like that. And uh, one day David came up to me and he says, you know, now we got 12 songs, but uh, you got to learn to play guitar or something. You can't just, whoosh, takes after his kids. He, uh, you know, you can't just stand up there and smile, you know, you got to do something with your hands. So uh, we went downtown Minneapolis and bought an electric guitar. So I'm going to learn how to play guitar. And uh, well, then our mom taught me how to do three chords on the guitar. And that's how we started out, three chords and a capo. And, uh, and we did that for a long time, you know. Just slowly starting to work into it, you know. But in those early days, you just gave what you had. If you wait until you're a professional before you start out, you're never going to start out. And so we started out that way, and then the Lord began giving both of us music, and we started writing and writing. And uh, the Lord has blessed us with just, I don't know how many, just a lot of, a lot of songs. And, uh, but anyway, there's a, there's a song he gave me one time we were down at some people down in Iowa. And the uh, Lord gave me a dream. And, uh, and I asked this fellow, he was a, a gospel singer, and I said, well, how, how have you made it all these years in the ministry of gospel music? How have you held together? How, is, how have you been able to do it? And this man said to me in his dream, he said, it's when I'm down on my knees. That's when everything happens, and that's what makes it possible. Well, I woke up and I wrote the song.
Well, bless the Lord. Amen. You know, when we're down on our knees, that's when things happen. Is that? Amen. Well, we're going to, to take a, a little break here for an offering. And we appreciate those who have supported this ministry for so many years. You know, when, uh, when we first announced we were going on the road to do evangelism, we had an aunt that said, you're never going to make money doing that. You know, she was right. But uh, I'll tell you, there's something a whole lot better. And we praise the Lord for the way that He has provided for this ministry over all these years. And uh, so we're going to wait upon you for an offering tonight. This goes for Gloryland. And uh, with the radio broadcast, we, we have to trust God every week to pay the radio bills. And uh, so we appreciate, you know, all those who have stood behind us so faithfully. And uh, a lot of people have gotten saved through our radio broadcast. And uh, one, one person in particular, uh, we were talking to a fellow one day, and he said, uh, by the way, did you know, and he, he told about the person, and he said, did you know that he got saved through your ministry? I said, no, what happened? Well, he said, you know, this fella, he uh, uh, he was always kind of rough, and, and you never saw him in church, you know, unless it was a wedding or a funeral. And uh, But he started listening to your radio broadcast, and he'd go in the house, and he'd hurry up on, uh, when the broadcast going to come in, and, on, and he'd finish his milking as fast as he could, but the cows loved that. And he'd run in the house and turn the radio on and his wife would get mad at him and shut it off. This went on quite a bit and, she, and they said that finally one day he had kind of had all he could handle with that. So he just went, they stayed in the barn, turned the radio on in the barn, sat down in the bale of hay and listened to the broadcast. And they said, you got to the end of your broadcast, you made this comment, said, if you want to receive Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, Get down on your knees wherever you are, maybe out in the barn by a bale of hay. Wow. And get down on your knees and ask Jesus into your heart. And he said that day, he got down on his knees at that bale of hay and asked Christ to come into his life. And he was born again. It wasn't very long after that he suffered a heart attack. And I got to see him one more time. And he had a great big smile on his face. And then God called him home. And we just praise God for everybody that supported the radio broadcast so they could do things like that. We've heard other stories just as beautiful. What God does. You know, we sit down in the, in the office in front of a microphone, nothing but machines in front of us. You don't know what God's going to do. But you know that somewhere a heart has got to be reached for Jesus Christ. And so we're going to ask that we could get a uh, couple of ushers to come up. Do we have anybody here? Okay. Let's pray. Father, we thank You tonight that we can praise Your name. We thank You, Lord, for the Gospel that is reaching souls. And we ask, Lord, tonight as we as, uh, as we give tonight, Father, we, we just want to give not just to the Glory Land team, but Lord, of an investment to reach more souls for Christ while there's still time. And Lord, we give you the praise, and we ask your blessing upon each one as we give in Jesus' name. Amen.
Given their hearts to the Lord just before death, listening to the radio broadcast. And uh, there's one lady, she said, My husband was sent home by the doctor to die. And the only thing he could do is sit and listen. The radio broadcast came on, and he gave his life to Christ. And a few days later, he was gone. That's, that's the blessing of the Lord. Here's a song that was written by Dottie Rambo. And she, Dottie was a, a woman who knew the meaning of pain. She lived with pain all her life. And uh, she knew the meaning of rejection. And uh, she just had a tough life. But she fought through it. And she loved the Lord. And she wrote, I think it was somewhere around 25 2,500 2, songs in her life. And this was one. And this kind of shows where she was at. You know, she wrote a lot of her music through through her pain. And, uh, well, anyway, trust and bless you. When I says, um, it shall be worth it all when we see Jesus. We were so privileged today to have John and Jane uh, Wilson uh, at our congregation. And they ministered over there this morning in Kirkston. And you really blessed our hearts. And uh, we're just glad to have you here tonight, Don and Cher. And uh, you know, that's, it's, you're just a huge blessing. Uh, 
Here's a song that I usually like to practice before we do it. It's not going to happen tonight. <laughs> but the, the message, I think, of the song, I remember hearing Jimmy Swigert do it years and years ago, uh, expressing a, a very, very important, a divine truth that when the Spirit of God is moving, that by faith we need to reach out and touch Him, receive Him. Because uh, there was a chorus we used to sing in the 70s, uh, reach out and touch the Lord as He walks by. You'll find He's not too busy to hear your hearts cry. Remember that? How many remember that chorus? Oh my goodness, we should sing it. Do you suppose we could sing it and remember to do this one? All right, well, now we'll expect to hear you guys sing it over there, and then we'll teach the rest. You all fast learners, even on a hot night? How many are Scandinavian? <laughs> well, they'll, they'll, they'll sing it fast, you know, they'll learn really quick if they can get down and have their coffee. <laughs> Reach out and bless the Lord as we goes by. Something told her 
desperate, the Bible says that she spent every cent she had on doctors. Sounds like today. And uh, it says she had an issue of blood and put it, put it plainly, she had a continual menstrual cycle that wouldn't quit. She was bleeding to death. And you know, she, her strength was very, very, she was very weak from lack of blood. She'd gone to the doctors and they couldn't figure out what was wrong. They didn't know what to do. You know, they didn't have surgeries in those days. And so she lived with it year after year after year. And of course, when she, when she was in that situation, it was illegal for her to be out in public. She had to stay in her home all the time because she was declared by the Jewish priests she was unclean. Imagine living with that. But she lived with it for it said, all those years until her money was completely gone. She, she had used up every avenue that she could find and finally, in desperation, she heard that Jesus was in the area and he was walking by. And so, in utter desperation, she took a chance. And she stepped out of her house hoping nobody would see her. And called the priests. And she, and she walked along until she got to the place where she saw Jesus and this whole crowd of people. But because she was desperate, she was willing to take the chance. And she pushed into the crowd, and she said, if I can but touch the hem of his garment, I will be whole. And her faith was there. It was all she had left. And so she took one last desperate chance and she reached out and she touched the hem of Jesus garment and instantly something happened and when she touched him all of a sudden he turns around and he says who touched me and you can just picture her shrinking back into the crowd what if somebody recognizes her what if they're going to call the call the high priest what if she gets arrested but Jesus looks back and he sees her with compassion. And as he looks at her, he said, he said, I felt virtue come out of me. And he looks the woman right in the eyes. And she said, he said, woman, your faith has made you whole. 
go in peace. And what a beautiful testimony that is. When Jesus can say, your faith has made you whole, go in peace. And you know, tonight I don't know what situation you may be living under. Maybe you have been, like that one song said, you have been in the valley. And you're like they say, that the, road, the path down into the valley is full of heel marks all the way down. We don't want to go there. But it's in those valleys He restores our soul. It's in the valley we become desperate for God. And we've been talking here at Ghoston about revival. How many would like to see revival? And you know, revival is not just an emotion. Revival is a move of God that totally changes your life. It is that deep cleansing of the Holy Spirit that gets you to that place where you hate the appearance of evil. You hate to be around it. It nauseates you. To be, to have the holiness of God in you, it spoils you for life from the pleasures of the world. Now the very things that you watch on television, you see the things that other people are laughing at. You're not laughing. Inside it makes you sick. Because you have tasted of the heavenly things. And this is what God wants to put in His church. God wants to put that desire for the holiness of God that it will burn in your soul. That it will cause you to hate sin. It will cause you to flee to Christ with desperation and say, God, I want you. I want, no, I want more of you. I want your holiness to burn in my heart. I want you to make me ready for the glory of the fall. And God wants to bring His glory on His church today. Tonight we are represented by a number of churches. Do you know what we here at Gosen are praying for? We are praying for the outpouring of God's Holy Spirit. We are praying for a revival to break out, not just in Gosen, but in every church in this community. That's our goal. That's what we pray for. That your churches, whichever church it may be, is going to have a visitation of God so intense, you will find yourself crying out with the presence of the Lord in your life. That is the only hope for America. But it starts here tonight. Like that woman, desperate for a move of God. Are you desperate tonight? Are you ready to do whatever, what's required? Are you ready to take the things that pull you into sin and cast them aside. Are you willing to take that step that says, God, this is my stumbling block. Get it out of here. Because I want to live a life of holiness for Jesus' sake. And I hope tonight that that revival spirit will come upon you right here. And you will take it home with you and it's going to ignite in your house. And you're going to take it to your church and it's going to ignite there until your church is on its knees and your people are crying out for the presence of God in their life. And God will manifest Himself in families bringing healing of relationships. But it starts right here with that desperation for God. Are you willing to call for it? Are you willing?
Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you, Lord, tonight for each one who has come here tonight. Thank you, Lord, for the desperate hearts that we are witnessing. But Lord, may we be like that woman who risked everything to be made whole. And God, we pray tonight that you would bring forth that kind of desperation in every single one of us that we will cry out and say, God, I need to touch you. I must touch you. Lord, I'm reaching out to you tonight. I'm reaching out by faith. Touch me. Heal my heart. Lord, become the Lord and Master of my heart tonight. Start that revival right inside of me that I may glorify you. I will give you the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. I forgot about the announcements. Next next month, now we have the Hanings. And that's on a Wednesday night, is it? Remember the date today? 9-11, yes. That, we can't forget that. 9-11, the Hanings are going to be here. Normally we have Sunday night, but it's going to be on a Wednesday night, 9-11. That's going to be a wonderful, a wonderful service. It won't be quite as hot either. And, uh, but we won't have snow yet, so praise the Lord. But anyway, so they're coming, 9-11. Remember that. Another announcement, we do have lunch downstairs. And nice hot coffee to cool off on. You know, my our mom, she always said, when it was beastly hot, she said, you know, a good cup of hot coffee cools you down. I thought that she must have bumped her head on something, you know. But you know, we finally grew up and discovered it's true, especially if you're Norwegian. <laughs> But we have lunch downstairs, and we just want you to come and join us down there for fellowship. We appreciate you coming, and we've enjoyed ourselves. I hope you have too. But it's been a great night for us, and we just appreciate each one of you. But let's sing our table prayer tonight. Be present at our table, Lord, and we're going to feast in paradise. We're thinking about heaven all the time here. All right, let's sing. Be present at our table.